Hey guys, Dave with First Place Auto Parts. Today in the studio, and recently we did a video where we explored the differences between a square bore and a spread bore carburetor, and we identified the drivability, but also why there was a different type of base on those things and the differences they made. We got a lot of requests and a lot of interest in that video, and people were asking how to determine how to size the carburetor for their application. In today's video, we're gonna look at just that question. Today, we're gonna to take a look at what the CFM ratings mean, which is cubic feet per minute, and how to determine what size carburetor is right for your application. So stay tuned today. We're talking carburetors. We're gonna better understand by the end of this video which one's right for your application, and I'm gonna show you what I've got on mine as well. Just a heads up and a little bit of a clue, sometimes bigger isn't always better. Stay tuned. Hey guys, if you liked today's video, please consider subscribing to the First Place Auto Parts YouTube channel. We're gonna continually be adding new videos every week where we show you how to put new parts on, we take a look at the latest parts that are available, and we go to some pretty cool car guy stuff I'm pretty sure you're gonna to wanna to see. Now in the automotive world, especially when it comes to performance, bigger is always better, right? We go to the bottom of the page and we choose the camshaft for our cars and we want the biggest carburetor. Look, we see race cars and drag teams that use big honking carburetors on top of their intake manifold or their blowers and we want the same performance image for ours. The reality is sometimes bigger isn't always better and what we want to do with a carburetor is really what we, we want to match the flow, the need of the car, the motor, to the correct carburetor. And the reason that's important is having too big of a carburetor can actually hurt not only performance, cost you more money, but really it affects drivability. And this really applies to street cars. Drag racing cars that are pretty much driven at wide open throttle don't care about necessarily throttle response from a stoplight. Car runs and drives and also performance. So today we're gonna take a look at this, get a better understanding. So let's go ahead and get started. When we're talking about carburetors, ultimately what we're talking about is their airflow rating, which is called out as CFM or cubic feet per minute. The carburetor on my left is a 600 CFM carburetor. It's a vacuum secondary. And on my right is a 750 CFM vacuum secondary holly carburetor. So the 750 is just a little larger. Now at first place auto parts, we offer holly carburetors that range everywhere from 390 CFM all the way over to a dominator, which has over a thousand CFM. So there's a wide range of carburetors in regards to their size that's available. How do you determine which right for your vehicle? Well, there's a formula for that. So in this formula, there's gonna be three numbers that you're gonna to have to know about your vehicle. The first one is the cubic inch displacement. Do you have a 302, a 350, or a 454? Maybe you have a 572, and if you do, good for you, I'm envious. The second number you're gonna to need to know is the max RPM, which is typically dictated by the camshaft, right? So let's just say theoretically, your max RPM is 6,000 RPMs. So that's gonna be the second number we're gonna put into this, this formula. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the cubic inch displacement, multiply it by the CFM, and the third number you're gonna use, well, that's the volumetric efficiency. Now look, most streetcar engines operate at 85, 80 to 85% 85 volumetric efficiency. They're not 100% efficient. There's things that come into play. Things like air cleaners restrict airflow. Also dual plane intake manifolds, and some on some of your big blocks that have the peanut port heads, all those things can restrict airflow either in or out. So that's gonna affect your volumetric efficiency. Some race cars, some drag cars, particularly some supercharged or turbocharged vehicles can run from 90 to 110% volumetric efficiency. So for the, the sake of a street driven car, let's just use 85%. That's a good running sound, mechanically sound engine at 85%. So what we do is we take the cubic inch displacement, we multiply it by the highest RPM, the max RPM we think we're gonna be able to achieve with this combination. And then we multiply that by the volumetric efficiency. Then we divide all that by 3456, 3456. And we get the theoretical need of that engine in CFM rating. So with this formula, let's take a standard 350 Chevrolet and give it a 6,000 RPM ceiling at 85% volumetric efficiency. What you get is a demand rating CFM needed for that engine of 516 CFM. Now look, you could go to a 600 CFM vacuum secondary in that car and be very happy. But now raise that RPM limit up to 8,000 RPM. Maybe you have a small wind or a small block that winds to eight grand, really mean street engine. What kind of CFM rating does it need then? 
Well, when you plug those numbers in, you 350 Chevrolet or 350 cubic inches, 8,000 RPMs, 85% volumetric efficiency, you get a demand of 688 CFM. A 600 CFM carburetor probably is gonna be a little bit too small, especially at upper RPMs, and that's a case where you would go with a 750 CFM carburetor. Again, a vacuum secondary carburetor is always gonna size its secondary butterflies to the ultimate demand. So even though you have a 700 50 CFM carburetor on your high winding small block 350 it may not use all 750 it still may use only 668 of those CFM but it's always better to have a little bit more than what you need than not enough because it chokes off horsepower now where you trade off going to too big of a carburetor remember what I said about airflow everything in a carburetor is dictated by what's called the Bernoulli effect as that air goes through that ventry and goes past the boosters, it creates a signal that starts to draw fuel from the main jets. When you have large primaries in particular, or oversized primaries for the vehicle, the airflow gets lazy and it doesn't draw as much fuel. What you start to get into are some drivability issues that you wouldn't have if you have gone to the right size carburetor. A 600 CFM carburetor for the vast majority of the 350 or 302 cubic inch, the 350 cubic inch engines that are out there would be the perfect size. The problem with the 600 CFM, at least in this case, is it has these side hung float bowls and it just doesn't look very race as opposed to these cathedral type float bowls in the 750. So a lot of people go to a 750 CFM under a 350 Chevrolet that they drive around on the street. Look, it'll work, it'll function, and you find a lot of these, and you can tune them as well. Look, you can add secondary springs to slow down the secondary opening, but what you can't do is you can't modify the primary size. And what happens is that air getting through that thing gets a little lazy, and it doesn't create as strong of a signal. Your throttle response on a 350 that redlines at 6,000 RPMs is going to be far better with the 600 CFM than it would with the 750. For you big block guys thinking you need a much larger carburetor than the small block guys, let's use a 454 cubic inch motor and plug it into that formula. So 454 cubic inches times 6,000 RPM to max redline times 85% volumetric efficiency. And that engine needs, wait for it, 669 CFM to be fully operational and maximize its full horsepower. This 750 CFM vacuum secondary carburetor would be a perfect fit for a 454 with a 6,000 RPM limit. Now, my car is a 454 cubic inch motor, but it was built after a certain theme, a gasser. So back then it was all about race. So what I have on my car is a tunnel ram intake, but I have two 600 CFM carburetors on it, which is way overkill. 1200 CFM, that car will never use. It has vacuum secondaries on it. It took a ton of tuning and here's the key. Look, you can run a bigger carburetor on a motor that doesn't need as much, but it's gonna require a Bunch more tuning, things like secondary springs and jetting and all kinds of stuff because essentially you've taken that vacuum signal from that engine and you've halved it between two carburetors. Now at First Place Auto Parts, we sell everything you need that you'll need to tune it, but I'm telling you, you're gonna have to, to be good at this. You're gonna have to not, well, know what your engine needs. You're gonna have to read spark plugs, really dial in the drivability, especially a tip in, things like accelerator pump setup and your, your jetting for your primaries and your secondaries and when your secondary is open and all those things. If you wanna run a lot of carburation, maybe, uh, maybe because it looks cool, maybe because your buddy told you or you got a great deal on an old carburetor or use carburetor to swap meet, it's okay, you can do it, but when you're buying new carburetors for your car, run this, run the formula on your vehicle to determine exactly what you need. Look, smaller carburetors, they cost less, they use less fuel. I'll tell you, they're not gonna follow the plugs like a bigger carburetor will, and you won't have the tuning hassles. You, and your throttle response will be amazing. The car will run great. You'll set the carburetor up and you'll never touch it. Go to a big carb or a carburetor that's too big, you're gonna continue to be chasing that thing, I guarantee it. Trust me, I know, I still do it with my car to this day. Guys, when it comes to sizing carburetors for your car, be honest about your car's application. Know the cubic inch, know the max RPM, and also the volumetric efficiency. Look, that you're gonna take a stab at probably, and let's go with 85%, but use the formula, get the right carburetor for your car, and you're gonna be happy for a long time. Don't get the right carburetor and you're gonna have a car that you're gonna continually have to be tweaking with. 
and it's just not going to be that much fun. Like you've all smelled cars at car shows. It's, it burns your eyes because they're so rich. That's somebody who either has a carburetor that's too big for their car, or they just haven't taken the time to do some of the tuning for it and some of the tweaking. So get the right carburetor. At First Place Auto Parts, we have all the Holley carburetors that you could possibly want or need for your vehicle. Mechanical secondaries or vacuum secondaries in every CFM rating you can think of. Plus, we also have all the really cool tuning stuff, all the jets, and also the secondary springs that you're going to need to make that carburetor work for your application. Guys, I appreciate you watching this video. Hopefully, you'll understand a little bit more about sizing carburetors and how they work and which one's right for your car. Until next time, keep the hammer down. Keep it between the guardrails.